So what, is, what would you like to see as your ultimate legacy? Defender of Israel, liberator of its economy. Benjamin Netanyahu's promise of security to Israeli people won him several elections as prime minister. The 7th of October attack by Hamas, however, has dealt a massive blow to Netanyahu's mandate, leading to an eruption of anger throughout Israel, especially amongst the family members of those killed or taken captive and held in Gaza. Many Israelis feel let down by Netanyahu and his coalition by the way his government is handling the situation in Gaza and the occupied territories. Those of us who are here are expressing a lack of trust in our government because we feel that we need a different government that can lead us to peace and coexistence. Many Jews all over the world have also voiced their opposition to Israel's actions and approach following the events of 7th of October. I say, in this case, the actions of the Israeli government are not in my name. There are Jews, many, many Jews, who, who say, not in my name. Even before 7th of October, Netanyahu has come under a lot of pressure in Israel. Millions took to the streets to protest his government's controversial judicial reforms, intended, among other things, to abolish the Supreme Court's power to overrule government decisions. Distracted by internal political divisions and the deepening of control in the occupied territories, many Israelis feel let down by the government. Fury over Netanyahu's bolstering of Hamas and facilitating its funding in a bid to prevent the establishment of a Palestinian state has also raised further questions since 7th of October. For years, Netanyahu explicitly preferred to deal with Hamas in order not to have to deal with the uh, Palestinian Authority. Why? Because he didn't want to negotiate peace with the Palestinian Authority, and therefore he uh, put all the efforts in order to create a certain rapport with the Hamas. A bombshell report published by the New York Times revealed that Israel knew about Hamas's plan over a year in advance. According to the report, Israel officials obtained a detailed 40-page document, codenamed Jericho Wall, which outlined Hamas's battle plan for a devastating attack on Israel more than a year before it occurred. Despite widespread circulation among Israeli military and intelligence leaders, experts dismissed it as aspirational. This is extensive planning that would have to take place over the course of many months. And the fact that the Israelis seem to have been blind to it is something that is going to, I think, lead to an overhaul of the Israeli intelligence uh, service uh, leadership. The military's failure to take these warnings seriously left them unprepared in what has been described as the worst Israeli intelligence failure since 1973. With U.S. backing and military support, Netanyahu launched a wide-scale war and bombing campaign of Gaza in a bid to crush Hamas. As the death toll continues to rise in Gaza, with thousands of Palestinian civilians, mainly women and children, killed, Netanyahu and his government are increasingly facing pressure in their war on the besieged territory, both at home and abroad. Palestine will be free! The way Israel defends itself matters. It's imperative that Israel act in accordance with international humanitarian law and the laws of war. The meaning of state is to protect its citizens. So once Israel didn't do it by um, allowing them in a way to be kidnapped, and now Israel is again just sending them to death. And we are asking the Israeli government, we are demanding to stop the war, to release all the Palestinian prisoners and to bring back all the Israeli hostages and to maybe for the first time ever since 1948 to understand and to realize that the only solution is to bring peace, democracy and equalness to this piece of land. Since 7th of October, far-right ministers in Netanyahu's coalition, including Itamar ben Gavir and Bezalel Smotrich, have sought to embolden and arm illegal Israeli settlers across the occupied West Bank. This has led to a significant rise in the already high tensions of violence in the occupied Palestinian territories. 
At least 273 Palestinians have been killed in the occupied West Bank, including 63 children since 7th of October. The actions of these ministers have also caused friction with the US and other allies as they make it much harder to bring stability to the occupied territories. I continue to be alarmed about extremist settlers attacking Palestinians in the West Bank. It has to stop. They have to be held accountable. It has to stop now. Amid mounting accusations of Israeli war crimes in the occupied Palestinian territories, Netanyahu is pushing back against calls of investigation by the International Criminal Court. When the ICC investigates Israel for fake war crimes, this is pure anti-Semitism. While Netanyahu's reign continues as he leads the war on Gaza, many are wondering if he is delaying the inevitable day he will need to answer serious questions on the failure to safeguard Israeli security and handle a crisis situation effectively. Thank <music> you.